Well, hello everyone out there and especially to you ladies that are watching this episode of Girl Talk. We're so glad that you tuned in or are going to be eavesdropping in on a conversation that is near and dear to my heart. It's really the heartbeat of what I believe God has called me to do and what my role in the church is. In addition to being Greg's wife, I am so happy to be part of a women's ministry. Um, you might call me the executive director or you just might say, Kathy has just loved women's ministry for many years and what I love about women's ministry is that it focuses the women on community centered around the discipleship we find in the Word of God, how important that is. So before we begin, I wanted to read a passage of scripture that I feel really speaks so clearly to the need for being centered in the law of the Lord, in the word of the Lord, as the scripture says. So I'm going to read to you from Psalm number one, and this is what it says. Blessed is the man or the woman who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but her delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law she meditates day and night. She is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in all that she does, she prospers. And then it says, the wicked are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the day of judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish." Let's pray. God, your word is so clear, isn't it? There are two ways to live one's life that is centered upon your word, mm -hmm. looking to you as the Lord and the director of our lives. And the other one is to just try to make it on our own. And Father, we pray that as we have this conversation today, that many who are perhaps, maybe they're Christians, but they have never really studied your word. Mm -hmm. They don't know you intimately. Your word is not informing their day-to-day -day lives. I pray that this conversation will instill in them the desperate need that they have mm -hmm. to seek you first above all things. So Father, would you guide us and direct us as we speak of the great gift you've given us yes, in the scriptures God. that you've revealed yourself to us through. For we ask it in Jesus' name, Jesus amen. amen. Like I said, this is a, um, a subject that is near and dear to my heart. It is a subject that has changed my life when I was a young girl. Um, I became acquainted with Jesus when I was about 14 years old. And although I had heard about God and heard about church and even attended a church, I didn't have a personal relationship with him until that day when I was about 14 years old, I asked Jesus to be my personal Lord and Savior. But it wasn't for a number of years that I really began to understand and appreciate the importance that it was for me to have an intimate, personal relationship with God. Yes, I went to church. Yes, I listened to Bible studies. Yes, I even had Christian friends. But I don't know that I ever really sunk my roots deep enough into the Word of God until a number of years later. And my life really suffered for that reason. But I am here today to tell you God's word will change your life. And so are these ladies that I have gathered with me today in this conversation. I am so happy to introduce you to a number of the leaders in our women's ministry. And uh, sitting closest to me is Ronnie. And Ronnie, you've been with us here in, um, in Orange County at the Bible Study for quite a few years. Is that right? Since we started. Mm. Excuse me. Since we started at um, Free Chapel. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes. It's wonderful. It is wonderful. The very first year. I love that. You, and you probably won't remember this, but the very first year, Shannon Finnegan was my leader, and uh -huh. she asked me to speak at the end of that very first year. Oh, right. And I said, I, when I first came there, mm -hmm. I didn't even know anybody that knew anybody that went there. <sighs> and You didn't know anybody. I knew no one. Oh. And I would come to church early and hide in the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> I did until church got started, and then um, because you just didn't, I didn't know you didn't anybody. Know anybody I and wanted you were afraid. to be there, but I didn't know anybody, Aww. and I didn't really have anybody approach me. Um, but I was in a, an awesome group. Shannon was my leader, and then I started working hospitality with Stephanie Chapin. And that was it. That was all that it took. And now you've been a group leader for over 
almost 11 years. It's got to right? be. 11 years, yes. right. Wonderful. Oh, and Lisa, you are also one of our group leaders. Yes, and I am. I actually remember that story because I was there also at Pre Chapel. No way! Yes, all that, three of you were I there. I remember when the that spoke days. to me so much because I also would come and I wouldn't talk to anyone and I would just leave right. <laughs> in, <I> <laughs> in the very beginning. And but that encouraged me that you there was someone else out there that felt the same way. Wow. <laughs> I think we're I think we're learning something here <laughs> that you can go to an awesome church and it could be a big church, yes. but really the way that you're going to get to know people and be able to make a friend mm -hmm. is really when you step into like a small group yes. and a Bible study. Exactly. And now you don't have to hide in the bathroom <laughs> right. Right. because it's, it's you the truth. get to know one another when yeah. you join a, a, a small group. Right. Yeah. right. It's how you make a big church a small yeah. church. And it's also essential. I mean, if we're talking about the things that are essential mm -hmm. to life and to thriving in life, it is really God's word mm -hmm. that is processed in a community yeah. of people because we're not meant to do this life alone, are we? No. No. Yeah. No. So Melanie, you are, um, you are what we call a coordinator, which means you, you head up the, um, the training and the support systems and the encouragement that small group leaders need, yeah. as well as being a product of the small group system that you have grown up in. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I just want to say like one of the greatest privileges and honors of my life has been um, being a part of this women's ministry. Mm -hmm. And I love that I get to sit here with Lisa and Ronnie because I've served alongside them for since the beginning. Wow. You know, I didn't realize that, but from the very beginning of Harvest Orange County, when the Virtue Women's Bible Study started. So we've co-labored alongside each other for years. Mm -hmm. And, um, <laughs> To, to that first point though, um, you know, I grew up going to a, a, a you know, in a Christian home, uh, going to church every Sunday, but it was truly a, um, the Bible study that taught me the daily discipline of mm -hmm. being in God's word. And I think that's what is so meaningful yes. to you and what you want everyone to yes. experience. And I love that that is the vision for mm -hmm. the, for the women's mm -hmm. ministry. And you've let mm -hmm. that be known, Kathy. And I, I, I love falling under that, mm -hmm. um, that covering because that is all of our hearts that the women would know Jesus for themselves and to be able to open up the word and, right. and to read and, you know, to hear from God. I think that, that what, what is happening today in, in the chaos and the busyness of our lives, and we're all busy, everybody's busy. If you ask people, well, have you been? I'm busy. That seems to be the go-to answer that, that a lot of uh, the women that I know that are, or, or that I see out there, they are, um, they're Christian women, they go to church, but their, their personal um, relationship with Christ is often built on, on a specific book or another popular Agreed. women speaker or, and I think the, the big drive that, that we all have seen the fruit of in our lives is that, um, that our, our spiritual lives, although we're very much helped and informed by women who have walked the path ahead of us and mentored us, but the best thing a mentor can do is to point you to the source, to the word, to get your roots in the scripture, because when the bottom drops out, you know, you cannot live on that pithy Instagram post. You are going to have to know your savior for yourself. And so Melanie, that's been really the importance, right? Ladies? Absolutely. And how it has transformed our life and how has it transformed your life, Ronnie? To um, see the diversity that God has brought into a mm -hmm. uh, small, it's the diversity in my group, um, whether Tell it's, us about whether it. it's yeah. socioeconomic, whether they were raised Catholic, um, what their belief system was a year ago, how strong they are. And I have babies, I mean babies, two years ago, um, I mean, Bridget's coming to mind. When she first came into our group, she'd never, not only was she not attending church, she had never been in a women's group. Mm. She's, she's got to be four years solid mm -hmm. now. Every year she's back in group, in our group, mm. and she's there every single wow. Wednesday. No, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. So, you know, you ask yourself, I was just thinking about this before we met, and I was thinking, where, what other place would you see such a diverse yes. group of yeah. women? And I had 20 this year. 
Wow. For a long time. And I think even when we dropped down, we still had 15. That's amazing. Where would That's you huge. see that? That is not such a small group. <laughs> no, where would you see that many walks of life yeah. were it not for the love of God? Yes. Saying, yeah. okay, I'm going to put you together. Not only mm -hmm. that, the way they love one another, the way mm. they've so easily accepted one another. No, from easily, such diverse from backgrounds. Yeah. The moment they walked in, if they were in the group, mm -hmm. they were in the group. Mm -hmm. These women are on <laughs> WhatsApp every other day because <laughs> I'm in that group, talking to one another, praying for one wow. another, taking mm. um, I, the support's unbelievable. We've seen a mm -hmm. lot of really unfortunate things, but then we've seen a lot of things to be joy. We've yes. grieved with yeah. those that are yes. grieving, and we've rejoiced with those yeah. that are rejoicing. Yeah, how important is that in your life, Wonderful. Lisa, when you think about your, you know, your small group and how, especially through this time where we were quarantined, and um, what has the value been being connected to a group of women deeply that, you know, even despite the fact that we can't, we weren't able to meet necessarily face to face and, and Ronnie, you say you're still meeting. Um, some of us continued on long after the, our study in the book of Exodus and life of Moses came to an end, we continued. How has it helped you through this season? Well, it was perfect for the Lord is so faithful in that he prepared us mm -hmm. before you know, we were studying the, um, the Israelites and Moses before we even went into quarantine. Mm. So we were already able to study and see how we shouldn't be grumbling and complaining. And we learned that and we were able to see that. <laughs> and then we were in it and we were right in the thick of it and had to have hold each other accountable, yes. you know, to do the same, to continue to point to the Lord. And mm -hmm. um, it's just been a beautiful thing to even though we couldn't be close, you know, face to face yeah. to still be able to connect with one another and I be there that. for one another. How old are your kids, Lisa? I've, um, she's one day oldest is going to be 13. No next way. Month. <laughs> like you're 13 yourself. <laughs> and then my youngest will be nine and a half. Nine and a half. Yeah. So sweet. That's, that's great. Yeah. But you know what I love about the fact that you, you know, you have young ones still in the home is that you have stepped into a position of leadership. And how did that, how did that, do you always feel like you were going to be a leader? Did you join a small group? And <laughs> I know somebody recommended you, <laughs> don't just become a leader. Someone sees gifting and potential in you and, and invites you. So. Right. That, that actually um, happened unexpectedly. It wasn't something that I always planned to do. And it was actually the, um, the, the time that it happened, I was in a small group and I, there were a bunch of women with tiny little babies in the group and I really wanted to have another child at the time and you know my husband we weren't ready we weren't going to do that again go down I had really tough pregnancies to oh. put you know to make him feel a little better <laughs> so that was a problem but I walked into that group and wanted to leave oh, I wow. I just felt like it was just too much but God used that that pain mm. and that anguish and I got to stay in that group wow. and um, be around those women and actually I was, I had free hands, so I could be helpful in that, in that group, you know. Um, I didn't know this story. That is So beautiful. I was able to, I stuck it out and because mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. feel the Lord telling me to leave the group. Mm -hmm. I just felt uncomfortable in the group, but I was able to stay. And then that led to serving the following year. Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> just like what you were saying, the diversity that many times you'll find yourself, um, in a group of women, some of them you don't know, some you might know, but how important is it, Melanie, that we don't just have people that look just like us, live just like us, are just like us. We're only seeing life through a certain lens. Right. I, know. Um, I love that Lisa just kept coming back because I think as women, um, Gosh, a lot of things as women. I think we could be kind of touchy-feely. I think we can become real emotional and let our emotions kind of drive our decisions. But what I love about um, our, our virtue ministry is that everyone is welcome. And in each of these small groups, um, it's like you're going to find new, brand new baby believers who are just learning to take those first steps of faith. Mm. And it's like what 
what a great place to be because yeah. they are learning the word of God and seeking to apply it. And then we've got like saints. We've got women that have like <laughs> have walked with the Lord for decades exactly. and they have so much wisdom. And I think they're, they're each gleaning from yes. each other, you know? Yeah. And um, so I think I want to encourage everyone, you know, to be in a small group and, and to give it a chance and to keep coming back because mm -hmm. sometimes we just might feel, oh, I don't belong here or I don't have anything in common. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you just will just hold on and trust God, he's going to start <laughs> knitting hearts together. And God. by the end of the year, we're going to have all of these like praise reports and glory stories, yes. you know, what God did. It's, the truth. it's so true. You know, I, I, there's one story that sticks in my mind many, many years later. There was a, um, a woman that came, someone probably said, you really should come to this. And she said, you know, I, this isn't for me. I don't relate to women. She was a, a businesswoman and um, she didn't like all the touchy feely emotional stuff, all the tears and weepy and all that and all the hugs and kisses and hearts and cards. And she's like, I, I'm a businesswoman. I will not fit in with this group. And she came and she stayed and she stayed and she realized that there is that beautiful diversity right. and the different personalities, different callings, different giftings, mm -hmm. different lives that they've lived. But she began to glean from each and every one. And at the end of the year, we have the moment to give, tell your story. Yeah. Right. As, uh, as the scripture says, let the, the redeemed of the Lord say so. And so it was her say so moment to tell her story. And I'll never forget what she said because it just blew me away. Mm -hmm. She said, I didn't know what it meant to be a woman until I came into this small group. Beautiful. And it wasn't that um, someone else was telling her, this is the kind of woman you need to be. It was because she looked right. at the scriptures. She looked at what God's word said about what it meant to be a woman. And today we have everybody under the sun telling us mm -hmm. right. what a woman should look like, right. what a woman should be like, how a woman should behave, what, a, what we should be. Right. And the, the culture is constantly changing. Right. So the definition of a woman in the 50s to the definition of a woman in the 70s to the definition of a woman today, if there exactly. is even a definition of womanhood today, um, has changed. But God's word never changes. It's not external, it's internal, and it, it's why we put our roots down deep in it, right? Amen. Beautiful. And, and my prayer for women that might be watching um, that have maybe never been a part of a Bible study, because I think there's that intimidation factor where, well, I don't know anything. And mm -hmm. it's like, th but this is the place to discover, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, God's word. And, um, and there is so much love in that group. Um, yes. But what I was going to say is even if you just have um, an inclination or even... Um, um, like a curiosity, I yes. would say that would be enough to come to a small group because mm -hmm. like you're saying, Kathy, like the culture is telling us who, who we are and what we should be doing, but we want to know what God's word has to mm -hmm. say. And this is where we will discover, you know, God's plan for yeah. our lives. Right. Well, when we, when we look at where we are today as a, as a nation and what's going on in the world and everything around us is moving. Yeah. Everything around us is shaking. Yes. We don't know from one day to the next uh, right. um, what's going to happen. The foundation that God lays, um, it tells us uh, our God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Indeed. How would I know that if I didn't know his word? Right. And what does that even mean if I don't know the God who is telling me that he is a refuge and a strength in the day of trouble? Right. And, and then it says that, that there is a city whose streams make glad the city of God. In other words, there, there is our citizenship here in this world, and we're living in our real world, and we're facing real problems. Exactly. But underneath all of that, we have God's word. That is our security and our safety, regardless of what's happening on the outside. Exactly. And I want you to have that. I want you to know that, that God is there. He is available for you. And as we look at the scriptures and we, we studied the Israelites this year, what did we learn? I mean, we learned that these people were in a places of transition. They had massive transition. They were slaves yes. in Egypt, set free in the wilderness. Now they're the people of God. They were tribes being formed into a nation that had to learn to stand together and to trust God in the hard places. And then at one point, they're called to leave the wilderness and, and possess the promised land. And how, how important that is for us that we have God 
in every moment of those transition points in our lives that he is the constant yeah. when everything else might be changing. And we might not have known how important what we were studying was really going to be mm -hmm. because it was like, okay, we're studying mm -hmm. Moses, but then we didn't realize mm -hmm. that we were going to be in that narrative. Right. We were going to be having to apply those, um, mm -hmm. the, you know, uh, those, those lessons that we had been learning. And I think that's the other thing I've heard you say before too, um, you know, Kathy is like, being in Bible study is really an investment. And mm -hmm. it's like, at one point or another, you are going to want to know what God has to say. And it's never too late, um, you know, to, to, begin. to yeah. begin. No, it's not. Uh, I was thinking back that when I very first started Bible study, um, I came with a baby on my hip. I had a six month old and I wanted <laughs> to find out what is Bible study all about. And um, I, but for the sake of, I don't want to sound dramatic, but honestly, I could say mm. that being in a women's Bible study has been one of the best decisions I've ever made in mm. my life. Mm -hmm. And maybe that 20 year old didn't think it then, yeah. but yeah. I can say that now having walked this far, mm -hmm. you know, and I just think to myself, I know I have far to go, but I am so grateful Amen. that I have been rooted in God's word because it has been my stability through, um, through, through everything, especially right, right now, these right. crazy times. Through all the seasons that yeah, we've lived. Indeed. And some of us have lived a few more seasons yep. than <laughs> some of the rest of you, but but we can stand and say, testify that the Lord would, is faithful. I would also like to say it's not too early to start either because mm. my daughters were able to, we homeschool, and oh. they were able to do join the homeschool group over the summer, mm -hmm. studying Philippians so and First Peter. And my little one, who's nine and a half, it was so fun to see her mm. like going through the, the lessons and then pulling me a side and I really let them take ownership of it on their own yeah. but when she had questions she would come to me and I would show her how to dig a little bit deeper That's and amazing. You know, change the translation if it, to make it a little more understandable but they were really enjoying that time as well. Mm -hmm. And she, of course, they're a little, they were a little timid to share, but that's beautiful too, mm -hmm. to see how God can take that desire and they can, he can grow that as well. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And then speaking of the foundation that you were mentioning a moment ago, one of my women, um, I was, our business is income tax and I got really busy and one of my women, without me knowing, went ahead and took it upon herself to invite, I believe it's it's four or six women in our group, even though we were supposed to be social distancing. I'm thinking the thinking was no, no more than 10, right? I'm thinking, yes. I'm thinking it was no more than she did. She took six and they did the study in Philippians. Amazing. I just found out recently. And you weren't able to be leading that they, group, but they, they stepped up and did it themselves. They didn't even invite me because they knew I was working, but I just, they're getting ready to finish. And Isn't that so amazing? It's wonderful, but I... Yeah. But it's because they've been in group. They've been in group. They've been in study. Yeah. What are we just going to stop studying the Word of God? Because we're, mm. no, yeah. she took it upon herself to invite six of the women that are in our group. And it's it's our breath. Right. It's our lifeline. Right. It's our it's it's Thanks. the food we eat. It's right. like okay, well, we're not going to eat till next September. Right. No. Because <laughs> we're, we're but we're going to do that every day intentionally. Yeah. And I, I love the fact that. Without you being there, they decided to do it on their own. They did. And, you know, I, I would just say to those of you who are out there that um, that aren't part of a small group and maybe don't live in this uh, Southern California, Orange County, or in the Inland Empire area, that we have every single one of the Bible studies that we've ever written posted online. They're free for you to download. There's no reason in the world that you can't gather a group of friends via Zoom or, or, or the people in your own household together and begin to study God's word for yourself. And there's teachings available and blogs available. Lots is available on the Virtue website, which is virtue.harvest.org. So you may be thinking, well, this is so great for all you guys because you live near each other, but I live in wherever. And there isn't a women's study that I know of. Can I just say, be the catalyst, start and, uh, and we would love to come alongside and help you. We, you know, just uh, shoot us off an email. If there's any way we can be an encouragement to you, we could even send you some, some training materials that would be wonderful. But uh, Melanie, you're getting, we're getting ready to, and uh, those of you that are in this Southern California area and can join us um, and would like to be a part of a women's study, we're about ready to launch in September. Um, 
it will be so much easier and so much more um, convenient for all of us to become a part of a small group because we're going to be offering um, some different ways in which you can participate. Um, and that's going to be so exciting. Tell me what you're thinking about that, Melanie, as we're getting ready to raise up new leaders and... It's so exciting. And, you know, I love that our women's ministry is harnessing the technology that we have available. We're mm -hmm. definitely seeing it as a blessing from the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, the gospel has um, has not been hindered. No. You know, we're, it's going out. And we've yes. seen so many actually more yes. women able to participate. And I think, I don't know if I'm letting the cat out of the bag, but we are going to have a lot more options this yes. year where yes. ladies are going to be able, you know, to meet more um you know, just on different days, different yeah. times. So I think just the variety and the availability is going to be wide open. So uh, we really want everyone just to be a part of a small group. Yeah. It's going to, yeah, it's going to be a wonderful blessing. Um, I was thinking about how, you know, we are busy as women, right? We have, we wear a lot of hats, um, mothers, wives, a lot of us work outside of yes. the home. And um, I just love that, you know, and I'm, let's all be praying that women just really have that desire that they want to know what God's will is for their life, how they are to navigate through this, you mm -hmm. know, these times in this world that we're living in. Because I feel like if you have that desire, God is going to show us, yes. he's going to reveal himself, you know, to us. So I'm excited for what's, you know, what's to come. Yeah. I really am. Well, we read that passage in Psalms where it speaks about the tree that is planted by the rivers of water. And the rivers of water is a source of life. Yeah. And our source of life is Christ. And he is revealed to us in the scripture. So if we aren't rooted in our source of life, who is Christ, and he is revealed to us in scripture, if we're not rooted in scripture, then what happens to a tree that has no source of life? It becomes it dies. It eventually dies. It withers. And um, it eventually, uh, you know, we'll, you'll see a, de a tree decomposing. But what we want is to be rooted and not only rooted so that we can live, but that we'll bear fruit in season. And I know for each of you, because you all are in different places of leadership, um, what that, how did you recognize those gifts? while you were just a, once upon a time, just a group mem member just sitting in there. You know, at what point did you say, gosh, you know, I, I think I could do this. I think I'd like to do this. I'd like to help women. Uh, Ronnie, <laughs> come on, you have the I largest never, group I, of women and they won't let go I, of you. I, they want to stay I with never, you year after it year. It never entered my mind, Kathy. And I don't think, how many of you, did, did you ever feel like, never. I'm going to be someday I, a, a I leader? I wanted yeah. to live in hospitality the rest of my life. <laughs> I, because it's where I met and loved and yes. was loved. And it never entered my mind. Mm -hmm. um, leadership never did. Um, that's something that Mm -hmm. Harvest chose for me. Yeah, it's the leadership saw something, mm -hmm. saw something in me, and chose that for me. But once that was chosen for me, I took it. What well, we changed you bought, we ball and changed you to it. this. Okay, you I are going to be a leader, that. and you must do what I we said. I took it as as <laughs> you received the it from the Lord. Absolutely, one hundred percent. And I thought, wow. Okay, mm -hmm. I want to be. I want to reflect you. Mm -hmm. I, oh. I want to have the wisdom that you want me to have. Mm -hmm. I think more important, importantly, and I, I need to be really honest because I do mm -hmm. believe this is why my group is what my group is. Uh, I love is the key. It will always win. Yeah. And he love. filled me with an abundant love for all of them, no matter who they were, what they were, what they used to be, what they <laughs> wanted to be, whether their study was... I think I want to join her group. <laughs> ...was ever done, or um, yeah. and they reflect that um, to one another. So by the power of the Holy Spirit, that's, that's what it is. It's yeah. God saying, I've called you to this. That it, and I hear it, and I hear him all the time. I've called you. The, the, it's the only way I can navigate my work and home and um, yeah. the women. It's your. It's, it keeps us sane. Ab oh, absolutely. It? Okay, so Ronnie. Okay, you are a, such a godly woman because you are so filled with God's love. So it's not a mystery how you are called into leadership. <laughs> you have a genuine love for Jesus and His oh, Word gosh. and for others. So mm -hmm. we just gave mm -hmm. you the tools to be able to facilitate a small group. Yes. But God and put we this stopped call. doing the coffee. 
So I had, you had to put me. So. <laughs> no. we, we used to give away, co- we used to have coffee brewed before Bible study. And then we just decided we probably should cut that out because people would stand around and drink coffee all morning. <laughs> but, um, so you ended up. There you go. You had to find just, a place for me. Someone, someone recognized the gift in you because they saw your faithfulness right, yes. in study. And, um. And, that's and you've given us the tools. Leadership at Harvest mm-hmm. has given us the tools mm-hmm. to start seeing that in, in the women that yeah. are yeah, yep. that are in our I church. think that's what's so beautiful is that the, the body of Christ isn't a single person. It's not a single voice. Right. It's, you know, we have all the different parts that work together and we're put, and, and there's such, like you say, there's such diversity in gifting and calling. And so each of these small groups is a little microcosm of a church. It's a microcosm of, 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 the, of the body of Christ because he says, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And so how beautiful is that, that, that even as we meet in small group, we see Jesus, we see Jesus in the body of Christ and we're fitted together as the scripture says, like stones fit together, you know, m- making us one, right. you know, we're standing together. And we need everybody's voice because sometimes women discount themselves and they go, well, I don't know enough to share or I haven't been a Christian for that long. Mm -hmm. And they don't even realize how God can use your simplest, you know, response to really bless somebody else in your group. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, um, that's why I, you know, everyone should be a part of a small group, whether you're a baby believer or you know, I even want to encourage those ladies who have maybe have been in Bible study years ago and they might say, oh, come well, back. I've already done that. <laughs> I would say come back because we yes. need your voice. We right. need to go. More than them. ever. Mm-hmm. More than mm-hmm. ever, I believe that um, what we have, because we're a, a community of women that are helping each other, praying for each other, supporting each other, through thick and thin, when one, when one member suffers, we all suffer together. When one member rejoices, we all rejoice together. Um, we need each other so desperately. And by this, the world outside sees a different kind of community. We're not in competition with each other. We're supporting each other and helping each other along the path to grow spiritually. And that is the joy and the blessing of, of what we do. And it's the joy and the blessing of what we want all of you to do. And like I said, if you live in the Southern California area and you're anywhere near Orange County or Riverside, we would strongly encourage you. This ministry has been going on for over, I would think almost 40 years now. And we have lived to testify, Melanie, you came as a young mom because, and your mom came, and we've seen the legacy passed down. And now your daughter is in every right, a a leader in her group, in her group of young ladies. So how beautiful is that, that we see this being passed on in generations. And it's not that we are here to proclaim a women's ministry. We're here to proclaim the word of God and how essential this is in all of our lives. This isn't some special calling for a certain class of women. Well, oh, they're the, they're the Bible study women. This is God's call for every single believer and every single woman out there. And if you're a baby Christian, just know that, yeah, there's some parts that you might need a little help with understanding, but so much of the scripture is so plain and we can just hear Jesus' voice speaking into the simplicity of our lives. Don't discount the fact that, well, I don't know everything and I'm intimidated. I might not have the right answer. Begin where you are. And uh, the Bible talks about line upon line, precept upon precept. How do you teach a child to read? How do you teach a child to walk. They just one day at a time, one step at a time, and you grow stronger and stronger and deeper and deeper in your, in your knowledge of his word. And then you will be that tree planted by the rivers of water. Its leaf shall not wither and it'll bear fruit in its season. And this is, this is the fruit that um, we'd love to see in every woman's life, in every woman's life, whether you're called to be married or you're single or you're work, out there in the workforce or you're doing something from home, wherever you are, God's word informs you and directs you and guides you and will keep you through those t- troubled times which we're in right now, won't it? Right? 
Melanie, would you close us in a word of prayer and um, just pray for the women out there that that are perhaps um, right now not meeting in Bible study and they're they're not sure if they're going to come back to Bible study or for the women, women that might not even have begun in any way to study the scripture for herself. Would you pray for her? Yes, I will. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Lord, we just come before you now, God, and you know every woman's heart who's tuning in right now, Lord, you know the fullness of what they're feeling, um, what's on their heart, mm -hmm. on their mind. Mm -hmm. And God, I just pray that you would just speak so personally to them, Lord. I pray that you would woo them by your love, that you want to make yourself known to them. So Lord, I pray that you would stir up our hearts, God, that we would have that desire to want to know you. Lord, the more we get to know you, the more we will love you. And the more we love you, the more we will obey yes. what your word has to say. Yes. And the more we obey you, Lord, you will transform us. You will transform our lives. And so, God, that is what I'm praying for each one of these ladies who are tuning in, God. I pray, Father, that you would show yourself to be that loving shepherd that wants yes. to guide yes. them and feed them and protect them and just give them such a wonderful life, Lord. Um, your promises are sure. Lord, and um, I just pray that they would have that desire for your word. And Lord, I know that there are women that are lonely right now, that are feeling mm -hmm. isolated. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray that you would bring sweet friendships, that you would connect hearts, that you would do such a life mm -hmm. change in women's hearts and lives, God. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we seek you. We yes. seek you first. And Lord, we know that in your grace and in your kindness, you will provide us with so much. Lord, as thank we you. put you first. Thank so I thank you, Lord, for this company of women, and I thank you for the women that you're calling, Lord, um, just to uh, just to add, Lord, to um, to the flock, Lord. We thank love you. you so much, and we just thank you for this time that we've had in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And I know you're all waiting to hear how you can become part of a small group. <laughs> and I will just say, would you please stay tuned? Would you follow us on social media, Virtue uh, for Women or my social media? I'm just Kathy Laurie on Instagram and Facebook. Also, you can um, keep in touch with us on our Virtue website. We will be giving you all the details for those of you that want to join a group and be a part of uh, this Bible study, which I guarantee is going to change your life. Just stay tuned and we'll be in touch with you to let you know how to do that. So we love you. We hope this has been an encouragement. Don't wait until we actually formally launch our small groups. Go ahead and start diving in. Download those lessons. There's so many beautiful studies available on the Virtue website. And we encourage you to begin. Get a group of girls and start together. So with that, I'd like to say thank you for joining us. And we hope we'll see you or hear from you um, on our website. Let us know how we can pray for you on the Virtue chat. And um, just be, uh, be in touch with us. We love you guys. Take care until next time.